Hey guys, my name is Ashley. I'm a vet tech. I am taking my Vitney in December 2019. I'm making some videos to help me remember, like the repetition of making the videos, editing the videos, watching the videos, um, helps me remember what I'm trying to learn. And if you wanna learn something or if you wanna just review with me, stick around. Okay guys, so before we start the video, I just wanna make sure that you guys know that the information that I'm putting out is from like the Merck manual, vet tech prep information. My husband, who's a um, veterinary student, gives me some of his resources as well. So I, a lot of the information that I get is reliable, but if you hear something or you, you know, I put something up that's incorrect, comment down below and just let me know. And so I can like pin a comment and make sure that I correct it so people are getting the most accurate information. Okay, so today I just wanted to talk about clostridial diseases. These diseases aren't really difficult to understand, like the concepts or anything. Uh, what's difficult is just the memorization of like which bacteria causes which disease. And so I'm gonna go ahead and start there. Um, so clostridia. Anyway, so Clostridium is a bacteria that is anaerobic, it's gram positive, they are rod shaped, and they're ubiquitous. So they also are spore forming. So what this means is that they're gram positive, so their um, cell wall is thicker than a gram negative bacteria. And when you're staining them, and you're looking at them under a microscope, they're going to be a uh, purple stain. Anaerobic just means that um, they don't need oxygen to survive or to grow, um, but they are obligate anaerobes, which just means that they actually absolutely need an area that does not have oxygen, so they cannot grow in an area with oxygen. So what that means is that you're gonna find these bacteria in like the intestinal tract inside the body and when they are outside in the environment they are in the form of spores so spore forming so this bacteria form spores in order to be able to survive out in the environment and lastly ubiquitous just means that they're found everywhere so these bacteria are all found pretty much worldwide uh, that you also find them on anything on the ground in food in on the skin of the animals, so you're gonna find them everywhere. For most, if not all, of the bacteria that I'm talking about today, the diseases that they cause all have vaccines in order to prevent them, so um, just bear that in mind. I'm not going to repeat it over and over again for the sake of you and me. There are two groups, and I'll read this off just so I can get it <laughs> clear. Uh, the two groups are um, organisms that actively invade the tissues of the host, and then the second group is characterized by toxemia from the absorption of toxins produced by the organisms within the digestive system. So those are just two groups for your information. The first bacteria that I wanted to talk about was Clostridium hemolyticum. This bacteria causes the disease red water or bacillary hemoglobinuria. And if we break that down, hemoglobinuria just um, is hemoglobin, which is the protein that is in the red blood cell that carries oxygen, and uh, urea just means urine. One of the signs they will have will be that their urine will be a red tinge. So this infection is acute, and it affects mainly cattle, but also sheep. It is found in the GI tract, and the spores go into the liver. The predisposition for this disease is um, fasciola hepatica, and this is the liver fluke. So to break that down a little bit, um, the cattle ingests the bacteria, the spores are then in the liver. When the cattle ingests a snail and becomes infected with the liver fluke, that is when the bacteria um, pretty much comes out and becomes active and then um, all of these symptoms and all of these things happen to the cow or to the sheep. Clostridium hemolyticum causes red water disease which causes um, these symptoms. Dysentery, anemia, jaundice, hemoglobinuria, depression, fever, dyspnea, and abdominal pain. 
Unfortunately, most of these um, diseases cause death within 24 to 48 hours. So a lot of the cows or sheep or whatever other animal that we talk about is gonna be found before they show any signs. If the animal is found with these symptoms, you can treat with penicillin, tetracycline at high doses. Um, whole blood transfusion and IV fluid therapy. Okay, so that's for that one. The second one that I wanted to talk about was Clostridium chauvet, and this one causes black leg disease. The predisposition for this is bruising to the muscles or the body, so a transportation, rough handling, or injections can often cause this um, bacteria to activate and cause this black leg disease. So this will be found mainly in sheep, but also cattle. With this disease, you will see lameness, depression, fever, swelling in hip, shoulder, chest, back, and neck, and prostration, which just means lethargy. Tremors, and they will be acutely febrile. This disease is also highly fatal, and um, the way it works is that the bacteria is ingested into the bloodstream and fed into the tissues. Once there, it'll lay dormant until the damage to the body occurs, so bruising, hitting, rough handling, like I said, injections, things like that will cause the bacteria to become active and cause this disease. The bacteria can also be found in the intestinal tract. Unfortunately, like I said, it's highly fatal, so a way to diagnose is mainly by a post-mortem exam, and what you'll see, smell, and all these things is you're going to smell a rancid butter smell, and also when you touch their... Um, legs or the area where they have been affected, it's like a crackling sound. The third one I want to talk about is Clostridium septicum, and this one causes malignant edema. Malignant edema is also highly fatal and is a toxemia. The bacteria is found in soil and intestinal contents. For malignant edema, in my vet tech prep information, it says that it, uh, it happens to cows. Um, in the Merck, it says, in the Merck manual, it says that it happens in all animals, all ages. And then there's also a specific disease that is for, that is caused by Clostridium septicum um, in sheep, and it's called Braxy. As far as malignant edema in cows, what you're gonna see is anorexia, high fever, and local lesions. The predisposition to this is um, wounds, so deep wounds like bites, surgery sites, or partrition injuries. Braxy is characterized by European sheep um, being fed on uh, frozen pastures, and what that's going to cause is inflammation of the abomasal wall. That one was pretty easy, so next one, how many have we done? Um, I think we're on number four, so number four. Um, this is gonna be Clostridium perfringes, and there's a lot of different types. There's type A, B, C, D. The one that I'm gonna talk about right now is type B. So type C is called purple gut. I found this in vet tech prep information. I did not find it in Merck. I don't know why, maybe I wasn't looking in the, in the right section. I tried to search for it under purple gut, um, type C perfringes, things like that. I don't know, but the information that I have on it is that it affects cattle and what it's going to cause is an extremely reddened small bowel that is filled with hemorrhagic fluid. So this is going to be um, caused or the predisposition is going to be increased in dietary intake. Now for Clostridium perfringes type D, this bacteria causes um, the disease that's called pulpy kidneys or also called overfeeding disease. Pulpy kidneys can happen to sheep, cattle, and goats. It's rare in cattle and it's mainly going to be found in sheep. The predisposition to this disease is being fed a high carb diet. So a way to prevent this disease is um, by not feeding a high carb diet and making sure to vaccinate. So the way that this disease works is that the starch is increased because of the um, carb intake and this gives the bacteria within the body a good medium to grow. Once it proliferates, the toxins that it creates called epsilon, um, these, these toxins are released into the body and they go mainly into the capillaries of the brain. 
when you're thinking about this, if the brain is being attacked, then you're going to see dullness, um, they can be comatose, they're gonna have some neurological signs, and uncoordination. So you'll also be able to see some things post-mortem because like I said, most of these are highly fatal. And this will be intestinal petechial hemorrhage. So the next one will be Clostridium novi type B, and this bacteria causes the disease infectious necrotic hepatitis or black disease. So we had a black leg and now we have a black disease. So the predisposition for this one is also a liver fluke. So the fasciola hepatica will cause the bacteria to activate and it will be found in sheep and cattle and it can rarely be found in horses and pigs. Just like the other ones, it can be found in the intestines and because it's a hepatica, you'll find the spores in the liver. Clostridium novi type B will be found mainly in areas where the pastures have fecal contamination and also where the sheep and liver flukes are high in prevalence. In post-mortem exam, what will be found are necrotic black lesions in the liver. In Vet Tech Prep it says black, in uh, the Merck manual it says grayish yellowish. So keep that in mind, obviously if you're tested on it then maybe say black, just because Vet Tech Prep I think is more geared towards the bitney. So to prevent this, you can reduce the snail population in the pastures that you have your sheep and cattle and horses and pigs, and you can also vaccinate. So the next one is Clostridium tetani, which causes tetanus and or lockjaw. This mainly happens in horses, um, but it can also happen in all species and all ages. They do not gain immunity from this, so once they have it, they can get it again. Clostridium tetani produces a neurotoxin it has to live in necrotic tissue. It cannot live in a tissue that is clean and healthy and getting a blood supply or anything like that. It has to be necrotic tissue. The neurotoxins that are produced by this bacteria are absorbed by motor nerves. And so the toxin travels up through the spinal cord. So the way that this is treated is by making sure that they are in a quiet, dark room. You can give penicillin, sedation, um, a muscle relaxer to make sure that they're not stiff as a board and also so they're not being overstimulated by things. All right, second to last one, Clostridium botulinum. And this one causes botulism. Pretty easy to remember. Um, this one causes ascending paralysis and the predisposition for this is caused by ingestion of feed. So the bacteria is going to be in like grass or feed and it's actually going to produce the toxins from what I understand in that grass and then they just, um, this, this happens mainly in waterfowl so it doesn't really necessarily happen in um, most of our large animals that we've been talking about but in, in like ducks you'll see it, um, they'll eat the grass and ingest the toxins. They will have difficulty chewing, swallowing, um, and ascending paralysis, so they'll become paralyzed. And last but not least, we have Clostridium sordelli. This one causes sudden death syndrome. This affects mainly cattle. The predisposition is unknown, and it's an enteric muscle disease. So it could be like the black leg disease where they get injured or they have trauma to their body, and that causes the bacteria to activate and pretty much kill them. With that being said, we are all done. I do have questions for you guys. I'm just gonna go ahead and put them up. I'm not gonna read them out for you. You guys can read that yourselves. And I'll have the answers in the description box below. Um, I am so sorry for not putting out a video sooner than this. I haven't been feeling too well, but we are back on it. What, like 30 more days? Take my bit knee. All right, anyway, so thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.